This video is about the conditional factor demand functions of the Cobb Douglas production function. So the demand for input depends upon the optimum scale of input of output and the optimum combination of inputs. So this is the first thing the assumption on the basis of which we can develop the conditional factor demand functions we should start from the optimum scale of output and optimum combination of inputs that should allow us to come up with the conditional factor demand functions and that situation happens when we are doing the cost minimization the optimum combination of inputs actually happens there and at that point where the cost line or the iso cost line is tangent to the iso quant happens when the slope of the iso cost line is equal to the slope of the iso quant so if we recall the value of the slope of the iso quant it is equal to this we have developed it in previous videos for Cobb Douglas production function we have calculated the slope of iso quant and it was equal to this now we can put this value in this boxed place and when we do it becomes this the left hand side it will remain the same and this negative sign gets cancelled out with that negative sign and now we have this form in this form actually we have tried to extract the value of v2 in terms of v1 so v2 is here we have developed its value here and if we try to develop the value of v1 in terms of v2 it will be something like this so we have both of these values however these are not the values that we are looking for because the conditional input or factor demand function basically requires a certain level of output in it as well in addition to the input prices so we have to bring in the output variable in it for that we recall the production function that is the Cobb Douglas production function on the basis of which we have developed all these steps so this is the production function and in this we are going to put the value of v1 when we do it becomes this v2 remains the same this is the value of v1 that we just developed here so this value is substituted here now the simplification process will set in and v2 raised to the power alpha into v2 raised to the power beta are the two terms that we will use to find out the value of v2 so the bases are the same the powers will be added whereas these three terms they should be shifted to the left hand side here you can see they are appearing in the denominator so this is the value of v2 with its power of alpha plus beta we have made the mirror image of the last equation because we need v2 on the left hand side now we have reciprocalized these terms because they will suit in the numerator when we reciprocalize them they have been um, reciprocalized with the denominators in the numerator place and vice versa and the sign of the power will remain the same because the double process of reciprocalization has taken place finally we merge these two reciprocalized terms together because both of them has a power of alpha and finally we get rid of this alpha plus beta by raising the power of 1 over alpha plus beta on both sides and we get v2 asteris and this will be the result and on the right hand side this power will be present and now we can call it the conditional input demand function because it is dealing with the output as well in addition to the input prices p1 and p2 so we can say that it is based upon these three independent variables out of which one is q this is why we call it conditional input demand function where a certain condition of output is present after developing v2 asteris we can develop v1 asteris simply by recalling this equation that we developed and used above here and if in this place I put v2 asteris I will get v1 asteris so v1 asteris will be had if we 
put v2 status here so this is the value of v2 status that we just developed and we will put it here so this is the couple of terms together and uh, we are separating this q over a raised to the power 1 plus 1 over alpha plus beta because we can see that these terms are same and their powers can be used together but there is a slight difference uh, and that is that they are reciprocal of each other so we uh, retain these terms in their or original form and we reciprocalize this term which now has become this term when we opened this whole bracket and we distributed this power to q over a as well as this term so it became alpha over alpha plus beta in its separated form now th since this is uh, uh, having alpha and p2 in the numerator this needs to be reciprocalized and for that we can simply reciprocalize it which will turn its power sign negative and now we can add them the powers because the bases have become the same when we add them this will be the power and we can solve it by using LCM the answer will be this whereas the other term will be retained as it is now we can distribute this power uh, primarily it will be beta inside and 1 over alpha plus beta will be outside so power raised to the further power both of the powers will be multiplied writing it in this way will allow us to club together these two terms in the whole power of 1 or 1 over alpha plus beta while this beta will be exclusive to this term only so now we have developed the conditional input demand function for v1 as well because it is not just dependent upon p1 p2 that is the two input prices but also on the certain level of output so this is how we can develop the conditional input demand functions for the cobb douglas production function this was the process of calculating it it was based upon the optimization process where the optimal scale level or uh, scale of output and optimum combination of inputs were present thank you